Well, I'm excited to be starting a new series that's combining two of my favourite loves, being both classical music and also some old beautiful hymns. So as I combine these, I'll be sharing them each Monday as a bit of a meditation Monday. It'll be just music for you to be able to sit back and listen to. But then on our normal Thursday, we'll still have the piano tutorial in case you want to figure out any of the little parts that I'm featuring from either the classical or the hymns. So Beethoven and an old hymn, and let's smush them all together and see what happens. Hi there, I'm Kylie and I love to share easy tips and tricks to inspire you to learn the love of music. Join me here for a piano tutorial every Thursday and if you enjoy the content, then please subscribe and a thumbs up is always the best compliment. So today is Beethoven's Opus 14, number two. And I've always loved that little section, how it kind of drifts up and drifts down and is really dreamlike and really beautiful. And the little arpeggiated figure or broken chord that happens mostly in the right hand, something that I wanted to feature and kind of led naturally into Oh, the Blood of Jesus early music where it was more baroque style and the harpsichord was featured a lot of the music couldn't be held just because of the limits with the harpsichord so to keep the flow going and any sound going composers had to kind of fill out a chord not just play a chord and expect the sound to continue on so once the chord was plucked by the strings of the harpsichord it faded quite quickly so to keep the chords sustained through a piece then the composer had to break up the chord a little bit into parts so checking out this feature that I did with Oh the Blood of Jesus a lot of the melody was created by six so the top note and the bottom note were a sixth apart. So then the middle finger could outline the chord there as well. And then as we step down, the sixth as well, the middle finger again could outline and wobble back and forwards between the G and the C sharp. Then down to the F sharp and the D. Once again, the A adding in the middle and then the G and the F sharp again, back to the, the D and the A alternating there. So if we add on the bottom hand, then basically stemming on from the Beethoven, it was a held note down in the bass, and then the top note just pulsed away with the next part, and then held note again, and then the top octave there with the thumb. So with the linking material, we're just going to step down, and then back up again. And we're going to put in that middle note with our left hand. Let's do it. heading up the octave to give that extra interest too is always really beautiful when that higher tune sings out. So a couple of elements that we actually looked at with the last video that I was making, I'll add a link, is if you want to lean your weight to the top part of the hand, that will help that F sharp and that melody to really sing out as we come down each of the chords. We want to fall our weight into the keys and lean on that pinky there to make it really sing out. And the other thing to keep in mind when we're doing this broken arpeggio is that our thumb and our middle finger are just so light and need to do their work there as well. It's really soft and wobbling there. Doing their own little strokes, make sure each finger is doing its job. So I hope you enjoy that combo of Beethoven and Oh the Blood of Jesus today. Enjoy and have some experiments with that yourself. Happy music making, ta-da.